All right, what's going on, you guys? It's your boy Three Stiggity Stacks in this thing, baby, representing TKOG. And uh, today I'm going to be coming at you guys with an update on Metal Fools. I've actually been uh, experimenting quite a bit with this deck, enjoying it a lot, and honestly, the deck is just thriving with potential. And it's really one of those pendulum decks that um has a pretty unorthodox playstyle and can be played anywhere between combo, mid range, purely control. Um, even glass cannon, you know, it's just pendulum's decks are just super duper adaptable to most situations, and more often than not, they're one of the few decks that can really push going second without the need of hand traps or other uh, generic tech cards that most decks would need to be able to simplify game state to combat a board. Um, and honestly, pendulums like this deck in particular has like metaphors the way they are is like it's a pendulum deck that grinds super well. It has a lot of floaters and recursion and has a really unique play style. Like I said, honestly, the way I play this deck is similar to how I play should alls. I like to set up uh, my more explosive plays on my opponent's turn. So a lot of the times on my um, turn, unless I open really well, like when you open really well, you can end on between the. Uh, the Jackal King or the Dweller, sometimes both, plus the uh, Infinity. Sometimes you will actually open the stones. Like if you um, open really good, you can get both access to Infinity and Absolute with IP. And what you'll end up doing if you have the full combo, like you'll have full Metal Foes to fuse on your opponent's turn. And you can use basically IP and the Absolute to link and you'll do like a Unicorn plus a um, a vortex double bounce play with the omni negate from the um, vortex the omni negate off the the infinity still backed up with the full metal Fools fusion play which is like it's a like it's one of those like your whole hand combos like it is a pretty like huge combo like you just literally play out your whole hand but honestly it's it's really insane um how this deck sets up um and even those boards you don't need those to win like you can actually what i like doing a lot with this deck is um, I've set up for in-phase Bismagir to add Vanisher. And what I'm doing, if I can't do it with IP Mascarena through uh, Mithrium, like linking those off into a Unicorn to get like a Shuffle, Snatch, plus a um, Summon Vanisher, you're setting up with full Metal Fools, and you're using the Bismagir to add Vanisher. And what you're going to do is you're going to use full Metal Fools, fusing with your Mithrium and your Vanisher, and you're going to summon out either Alkaheist, or you're going to summon out... The Azort, Azort list, I guess is his name. And what you're going to do is you're going to get a pop off him. You're going to get a Banish off Vanisher. Or you're going to get a Snatch deal off of the Alkaheist. Plus the Banish off Vanisher. And that's just off one full. I actually do the double full combo as well. So there's so many different in boards that this deck can make. It's actually super cool how creative you can be with your in boards. How amazingly like aggressive this deck is going second with your pushes. Um, it can out all of these pretty much Dragon Link, Winda boards, uh, Dino boards, you know, like it's just really, really strong, honestly. This deck is, like I said, very, very unique, a very powerful deck. Summoning Mithrium against Prank Kids is also really cool because you can actually play around Battle, uh, around Bow Wow Bark and force the Butler to Raigeki immediately because you're just going to bounce him. So this deck has some really cool tricks up its sleeve. Definitely not a, something that you want to sleep on. Um, if you like my content and you see yourself watching my um, channel in the future, you might as well do us both a solid and subscribe. Um, if you want to support the channel and just help a brother out, there's multiple ways you can do that. Whether you are donating, buying my merchandise, or becoming a member of my Discord, you can do either all or three or none. It's really up to you. Um, there's quite a few benefits from joining the Discord. It's an awesome community. It's not toxic. It's actually a beautiful community. Um, very, very creative individuals in there that you can bounce ideas off with. Uh, the Patreon has tiers that all have their own benefits that only you would get, and that includes the side decks uh, as the bare minimum. And um, yeah, with all that said, let's go ahead and get into this list. So yeah, I talked to, I talked a fair amount of game up, right, on this deck, because honestly, it really is that good. I've been very indecisive between taking this to locals, taking Magical Musketeers, um, Plunder Patrols. I'm just like super torn between so many decks. I think I might just have to take one one week, one the other week, just so that I can finally play them all, because I've been really, like I said, <gasps> torn between them, where like I want to play them all, but I can't play them all at once. So, um, yeah, getting into the list, though, um, I'm playing three copies of Summoner's Art. Summoner's Art is actually insane in this deck. Um, with your bad hands, it's just going to be a high skill. 
Uh, with your good hands, it's an extra omni negate on top of your in board. It sometimes is the difference between making absolute and not making absolute. And when you open uh, like well enough, because you do play literally six level seven metal folds, you can just use this to get your cleave for uh, package, and you're basically gonna have access to a cyber dragon infinity, which is an omni negate. Uh, and you can back that up with your IP Mascarina and your Absolute, and that's one of the other really cool boards. Even without full, like when you don't have enough Metal Fools resources after doing that, you typically set counter, so that counter gives you in insurance for your board because you'll have like the IP, the Shuffle Off Unicorn. Make sure that your Absolute is Chainlink 1 so that your Vortex comes out, obviously, as Chainlink 1 being the last thing to happen. Uh, just, you know, make sure that you're playing around the win effects, but you get like the double bounce, the shuffle off Unicorn, the bounce off the, you know, the Vortex, and then you have two Omni Negates after that. So it's like four interruptions, which is a cool way. And then you have counter as insurance in case anything happens to your board. If you need more pressure, you summon Vanisher, banish the shit off Fusion Monster so they can't add from Grave to Hand. And if you just need a follow up for recovery, summon out Bismagear or Melcaster, whichever one is more necessary to you. Um, but yeah, really, really good cards. Um, and, and summoners are typically, it um, actually attributes to all of those, um, all of those inboards. It's a really important card, honestly. I, I like that it's at three. It just, the deck just flows so well. Uh, and then we have uh, three copies of Bismuth Gear. We have three Melcaster. Melcaster is pretty nutty. Um, this card is just like, it's it's honestly so good that it's really easy to overlook this. You just see like, oh, it's just another Metal Fold. But honestly, it gave this deck a level of recovery that it didn't really have before. A lot of its recovery came from if you could keep like your sustain for your fusion plays, you would be um, looping your cards off of your um, combination, and you typically had to play multiple counters to grind better. Um, I was kind of torn between that too, like playing one or two counters, because counter lets you grind better, and it makes sure that you can't get otk It makes it a lot harder to break any Metal Fools board when you have a counter, because like this card exists, because Vanisher exists, counter is a real threat um, and it's going to make it really difficult for anyone to navigate your boards whether they're going um, full combo or if they're just playing a control deck it makes things really difficult so this card's really really strong honestly it's definitely a three of in my opinion um, and then we also have uh, three copies of Wolf Flame. Um, these are the Vanillas. These guys don't do anything. The best Metal Foes in the main deck are going to be Melcaster and Bismuth Gear because they give you more advantage than just the pen and paper or the even trade-off of all the other Metal Foes. They just do the same thing that these guys do, but these guys do more. You pop them, you add more cards. That helps me to further fuel my uh, Fusion Plays because... Like I said in the beginning, I play this deck how I play shit alls. I like to set my explosive plays up on my opponent's turn. That's why if you notice somehow I was mentioning leaving Odd Eyes Absolute on the field instead of just hard summoning Vortex. Because like I like to do more of the work on my opponent's turn. It also helps to play around Dark Roller quite a bit more when they have the Dark Roller. Because like now when Absolute dies, Vortex comes out. You still have the counter. You still have full Metal Fools Fusion. So even if they Dark Roller your Infinity, your IP Masquerade, and your Absolute, you could still potentially have the full Metal Fools set up and the Absolute into Vortex. There's some really cool boards, like I said, that this deck makes. I think it's an awesome deck. Um, you can combo off or not combo off, and you can still win the duel regardless. Going second, you have a lot of different options. You can outwindow with ease. You can deal with these Dragon Link boards fairly well when you draw the correct um, combination of cards. You don't really need hand traps to get the job done. A handful of Metal Fools is going to do a lot of work for you. That's why you see me playing so many. And finally, we have the one copy of Vanisher. Um, I've been like theory crafting a lot with this deck, you guys. I'm telling you right now. Um, one card that I do want to play that I'm not sure, maybe like two to three, I'm not sure yet. Um, is Painful Decision. Um, it just basically just foolishes a um, level 4 lower vanilla and adds the same name copy. So it, it helps to fuel for Mithrium and it's pretty much a Rota for this deck. And like I said earlier, you really can't go wrong with drawing more Metal Foes. In fact, I will tell you the more Metal Foes the better. That's why you see this heaping pile. Um, something that is deceptively strong is um, another cool thing. Like when you're setting up so like I'm setting up a lot of my plays on my opponent's turn and the other thing that I'm setting up for too is a Zortless dies and goes to scale, right? So you can either commit a Zortless into scale or Vanisher and these are effects that a lot of Metal Falls players tend to not use. You want to make sure that whenever you get the chance, try to just scale one of these guys, use their effect, pop it with the Metal Falls and then replace your scale. Um, especially because like this can be summoned back 
You can keep looping this off Mithurium or just recycle it because um, that's how Azortless works. Azortless is actually a really, really good card. Um, this guy gives you recovery. This guy actually lets you um, pop. So like it's really, really good that your cards are so multi-purpose and once you've used them to do one action, you can use them to do more. Like this guy is just really aggressive. Like he's honestly just going to allow you to just continually um, gain spot removal to systematically pick boards apart. Um, this guy is just going to give you a better recovery and it actually, believe it or not, adds any Metal Foes card, not just monsters. So you can actually recover, for example, your counter, since I'm only playing one counter and kind of just play the loop of looping counter, recycling this guy, using this guy to recycle counter. And when you're finally or desperate and you need the scale, you just banish counter. Um, so I just, I'm just pointing stuff out that you guys should be cognizant of when you're playing this deck. Like I said, I've been theory crafting a lot with this. Um, there's actually another one of my friends who is conveniently actually a Patreon member and he got to pick my brain on Metal Foes. I put him up to speed and pretty much tweaked his Metal Foes to be a lot better than they were before he spoke. So honestly, like I said, the Patreon thing is really worth it. And yeah, I've, like I said, I've been in love with this deck and honestly, I am not disappointed. Um, so now we're going to get into some power plays that are pretty vital. These are also must negates going second a lot more. More often than not, they are. Uh, let me stretch my arm. Oh, that felt so good. Oh, all right. Um, so the power plays are going to be the Wonder Pets. Um, so three hamster, three um, rabbit. And then I'm also playing the Mythical Beast cards. I actually decided to put these in. I was playing them before, took them out, and actually I put them back in. And then we have the Cleave Forts. So the Mythical Beasts are actually really, really strong. Like, I like my respect for Shadows is so high that because that deck is so popular, I normally tweak my main decks a little bit to always be able to deal with Winda in a pinch. So this card can both uh, deal with the Invoked portion and the um, Shadow portion of their decks, respectively. It also normally comes out, like, way too powerful to be punishmented. Um, and... You're not only getting access to that, but you have to realize, like, you're getting access to pressure, which allows you to dismantle something on the way into your actual real plays. Before you pendulum summon, you're doing this, and you can still get the Jackal King from your extra deck as well. So it's actually a really strong package. Do not, um, do not sleep on this. I feel like the word I would use is this is deceptively good because most people would say that the super duper, like, brain dead comment of, like, oh, this dies to Ash. Like, how does it die to Ash? Because, like, when you use the word die, you have to be careful. Like, are you saying that my turn is ended because they Ash this? Or is the reality that I baited their Ash and now the play that I didn't want them to Ash, I can actually go for my rescue hamster now um, or my rescue rabbit? So this play is actually really good. Like I said, it's a must negate whether you Ash it, whether you Macabre it. Um, whether you Cosmic Cyclone it, it doesn't matter. It always forces an interruption. It puts a lot of pressure onto the field. It's spot removal, it's protection, it's negations. It's a very, very versatile package that does pretty much everything, giving you Nibiru protection, outs to Winda, negate baiters against combo like Dragon Link. This also forces UCT preemptively. It can really do a lot, um, honestly, and on top of just having a searchable negator just to protect you from hand traps. Um, you couldn't really ask for more out of a package like this. It's 100,000% worth it. It's not going to break on you. Trust me when I say it's worth it at the end of the day. Um, the Cleave 4 package is also extremely, extremely good in Metal Foles. This is um, a staple package that you're never really not going to see in any Metal Foles list ever since the inception. Um, Metal Foles have been normally splashing cards even back when Kirin was legal. Metal Foles were just always good by themselves, but there was so much room um, for pretty much exploitable cards that you are normally always putting some other pendulum package in metal folds it's just how pendulums are in general they're very synergistic with their own cards the subtype is normally just take the best cards of every pendulum archetype and splash them into one deck but metal folds doesn't really need to do that these are just cards that help me to get additional pressure more interruptions protection for my main plays which is my full metal folds fusion is actually my main play like i said i play this deck like shit alls so a lot of the times my bigger plays are being made on my opponent's turn i'm just setting myself up for those when you're going second your deck is really really explosive um and now for the wonder pets i just call them the wonder pets because i just call them the wonder pets um the show when you have kids you're gonna watch a lot of kids shows so um Rescue Rabbit, we already know what this does. You have level 4, 3, and 2 that can all be summoned from your deck off of this guy. 
Um, drawing these actually is a really cool combo because rabbit sets you up for hamster. Hamster scale effect is really nutty. It's actually a plus two um, when you use it, especially with how metaphors work and how you're always popping your scales. A lot of the times, rescue hamster is gonna give you two additional metaphors activations, which allows you to just fuel your plays even further and continue consistently pumping out your metaphors fusion monsters. It is a pendulum archetype, but it loves the fusion summon, and I like that a lot. Um, his other effect is pretty much his normal summon effect. So when you have these, you can use them in multiple ways, like rabbit into hamster for scale, or hamster to get two out, link those off in two, and they have to be the same name, so you just tribute him, reveal one from extra deck, summon two of the same name, level five or lower, as long as you just know how to read cards, obviously. Summon him, and you can also still pin summon out your rescue ha uh, rescue rabbit, pendulum summon this guy, and then that's your free abyss dweller, or your free fusion fodder. Um, sometimes I use them just both for lots and lots of fusion materials, because like these both can get you two additional metaphor sets, either four metaphors on field or two in field and two in hand to scale. These cards just work really well and honestly they plus you so much that you really don't want to play metaphors without them because it's you're going to be missing out on a lot of them. Um, a lot of pluses and honestly it helps you um, maintain your resources a lot easier because sometimes you have to you're going to be torn between do I use this for fusion material or do I scale it to get an additional setup? Because you ideally want to have, for me, double full metal falls plus counter. That's what I want. And sometimes if I see like I, the counter is not going to be necessary because I did the Bismuth gear play to search for Vanisher, setting up my Bethurium. Because like I end my end boards, I set up to fusion summon on my opponent's turn by either using Bethurium. And if I didn't Bismuth Gear to add Vanisher, then I actually end on Orichalc instead. So when I fuse with him, I can go double pop with him and Azor, or even go pop and then snatch deal with the um, Alkaheist. That's just how I play. I don't really play like other Metal Falls players. Most people cut full Metal Falls. Some people just don't even set up for plays in your opponent's turn. And they play like a normal Pendulum deck, just Monster Mash, Negate Negate here all over the place, lose to Dark Ruler. But... The way I've set my boards up with this deck is like I play around Dark Ruler Droplets extremely well. I have interruptions here and I have interruptions that are kind of come from the back row. When you set up with combination, it's ideal to go for your bigger guys so that when you fuse with your, for example, Mithurium, you can bring the Mithurium back because you have to summon something with the higher level. Um, so just make sure when you're setting up for a combination that if you're going for Alkaheist that you're doing the, the double full Metaphors play that I make. And if not, then don't set combination if you know you're going to go for Alkaheist. Just set your counter, give yourself a better protection and follow up. Um, just, just kind of Metal Foes 101 for you guys. Uh, and then next up, we have three copies of Super Poly. I'm actually main decking this. Um, it's really nutty in this deck. You have a broken recyclable target that's normally always going to hit two of your opponent's monsters, whether it's like Seal and um, another. Like, I'm just going to take you guys down down the lane real quick to another really really powerful super poly target it's one metaphors monster plus two monsters with uh 3000 or less attack so you can just hit two really powerful cards against dragon link um against dinos you can't hit uct but you can hit all their other guys um this also is extremely good against obviously shadals and prank kids um it's really really good against prank kids because you can actually set your metaphors and then just fuse off and most people shotgun the moment they see anything like that shows that you're playing pendulums, they'll just literally just shotgun and go right into Battle Butler, because they don't want to be caught. Like you're, they're trying to set up the Raigeki before you pendulum summon, so that they're trying to like make you play more awkwardly and play around the Battle Butler, which is pretty smart to make you play around the Battle Butler even further when it's in your face. But Super Poly don't care about that, and this card's just very very broke. Like there's a lot of fields that you can easily break with Super Poly. And the free draw that you can get off Metal Falls Fusion and the bounce that you can get off of Mithurium really does help to mitigate the discard for cost of Super Poly, making it very, very free sometimes. So, yeah. And now I'm playing uh, double full Metal Falls. Like I said, I like to set up for the double full Metal Falls play on my opponent's turn. This is not a standard thing. In fact, most people just don't play this card at all. But I'm just not, I'm not everybody else. I'm not doing what everybody else does. I have my own play style. And like I said, I lean more towards exactly how I play Shadals, which is very, very reactive. Uh, I'm not going to do anything unfair with this deck. I am going to let you play. You're going to let me play. We're going to have a very, very 
basically a very, very mid-range kind of mid-pace duel where we're just basically interacting with each other. I have a response, you have a response, but I'm not just gonna say, hey, you can't play Yu-Gi-Oh! Most of the time you're gonna be able to play, I'm just setting up interruptions to pretty much hinder what you're gonna do. But for the most part, if I had to pick between Omni Negates and a double full play, I prefer the double full play because it also gives me a better sense of security. The follow-ups are there. You have the Mithurium full, you have the counter set up. And on top of that, you have an even better follow-up because when you're summoning Azort, don't forget, like he dies, he goes to Pendulum Scale. You use this Pendulum Scale effect, pop him, and then you pin summon him from Extra Deck and you can get another pop and just keep funneling your resources that way. Like I said, Metal Falls is just a really, really good deck. It has a great toolbox. It has a lot of recovery, a lot of floaters. It grinds extremely well. It's good against back row. It's good against combo. You couldn't really ask for more out of this deck because like, honestly, if you ask for any more, it would actually be a very, very broken deck because it's really good when you know what you're doing, but most people just don't. Uh, and then we have one copy of OG. OG, you can't go wrong with this. Obviously getting that free draw it's really, really good, especially, you know, for Super Poly, just mitigating that. Um, we have Parametal Folds. This is a newer card. It's actually extremely good. Um, it helps you a lot. There are some plays that you can't make, actually, if this card didn't exist. It makes it a lot easier to do your dirty work. And then, finally, for the Traps, we're just playing one combination of one counter. So, I am actually playing, believe it or not, six targets it's not horrible to draw any of them ideally if you draw any you would rather draw the fusion spells and not the traps because they just don't do anything unless you're playing like some magician souls build which i am not i'm playing the cards that i have in real life and making it work and it's honestly working beautifully um, but yeah i'm playing six targets as opposed to four um next up the extra deck so these are kind of like all over the place but i'm just gonna like set them there um, this deck is pretty, the, honestly, this deck is pretty disgusting. I'm not going to lie. I've been, um, like I said, just when I get really like determined to make a deck work and I start theory crafting and just get into the lab and I'm just like in like the zone, um, I can figure out some pretty crazy stuff for almost any deck that I play. And I've got this down to a practical science where I'm like, okay, this is where I want it to be while still having space for the generic cards that I need for my setups for pushes, going second, OTKs, and um, also to have better interruptions. Um, you want the flexibility, so like you want, you want fusions to make on your opponent's turn, but you also still want the cards that protect you from evenly, right? So, and just uh, in general, just blowout cards like equalizers. So you have like the absolute package into vortex, and you have infinity. So like you can have one or the other or sometimes both. More, more frequently, you're normally gonna have one because like you really have to open pretty nutty to get both, which it's not like it's impossible because honestly, like it everything's at three, you know? Um, Summoner's Art makes it a lot easier to get access to the Cyber Dragon package. So more often than not, you're either gonna draw the Summoner's Art or Scout. And if you don't draw any, you're not getting infinity. But when you do and you have the correct hand, you can get both of these. Uh, you ideally want at least one of them backed up with the whole play that I was talking about. And then you want Dweller. Dweller is really, really easy to make in this deck. With the Wonder Pats, you have very, very free ways to access this. You can even do the double Wonder Pat combo. Summon two, make the Metal Falls link to, which is right here. And then you're opening up your zones because what's going to happen is you're going to pop this guy or fuse him. And then you're going to resummon him down in the main monster zone, open up two more zones, pin summon three from extra deck, two of which are going to be the gold drivers you got off your first wonder pet. And then that's your free dweller right there. And if you didn't need the um, the hamster, you can just scale hamster and get your follow-ups on your turn. So your any boards will be really powerful and you have cards in your hand to play on your next turn no matter what. Plus you have the counter which can summon Bismuth Gear or Melcaster if you really need more follow-up or summon Vanisher. It's just really, really good. Uh, you set up, it's like um, the way you set up is like, I want to say virtual worlds because like your boards are set up, but you also can do the same thing next turn and then the turn after that. Like you don't really run out of anything. So like this is the extra deck. I'll explain it as I'm like setting it down. So like I'm on sword. Um, I think cold might have been better because like uh, often, you know, more often than not when you do the unicorn play, it's it stays. So just like any other, you know, like obviously the metal are vanilla, so it's a little different, but just any other like fusion or whatever can make you code. And a uh, boar sword is actually 
kind of that filler. I did give her to my code today. Um, a boar sword is kind of like that filler. Um, so it's it's normally it's either gonna be boar sword or code, but I ain't gonna lie, like boar sword is actually pretty nice, and it is gonna close games out a lot quicker than code is. Code is more like it's better for breaking the board on the way to the OTK. But you already do that because you're popping here, you're popping there, you're bouncing there, and you have the negates. So a lot of the times, the board's already clear for you to OTK. Um, so swords to end games, I have the IP into unicorn play, which is really good because you can use IP to link in with the absolute. It's a really, really strong play. I was actually doing this in my Zephyrus, my Zephyr and Demion Pillow Magicians as well. I've been saying this play for like over a year now. I've been telling people stop linking Absolute Vortex off immediately into your Opelousa and just do IP and the Opelousa using Absolute and like your Jackal King after it's burned its in the gate and then go into your Opelousa. Like obviously I don't play Opelousa in this deck. I'm talking about in my other Pendulum deck when I was telling people to do that and they're still not doing it. I'm like, all right, bro. So like, yeah, you want you want to set up IP. And if you don't IP with Absolute, another cool play is you can set up IP with Mithurium, which will still get Mithurium. That's why it's really important to max out on Bismuth Gear so that you have higher chances of seeing Vanisher because you're going to in-phase Bismuth Gear at Vanisher a lot of the times for your inboards to set up for your full Metal Falls play. And if it's not full, it's setting up for the IP. Like the, the key word with this deck is set up. Like a lot of your work, like I said, you're not doing it on your turn. It's going to be done on your opponent's turn. All you're doing on your turn is setting up and then your actual plays are being made on your opponent's turn. That's what I meant by like your explosive plays are being made on your opponent's turn. So you're really patient with it because if you don't need it, then the full metal folds just turns into a huge tempo swing being that you can just fall into a Mithurium now. And that's going to be really good because it's a floater. It's going to give you recovery. It's going to give you an additional activation to your metal folds. This also is really, really good playing into boards. Like ideally, um, when you have a handful of metal foes, like let's say it's just Winda by herself and there's no invoked portion, right? You can just summon Mithurium and literally just bounce the Winda, uh, which is super duper cool, right? Like Mithurium is actually a really, really strong card. Uh, when you're, they have the set shit all monsters, if you don't want to attack a Windy and trigger her effect, especially from deck, just bounce the shit all. You know what I mean? Like going second against any combo deck, summon this kid and then target one of their negators to bounce it and if they negate and destroy this like with the monster negator for example it's going to float into something else this helps the plane to boards a lot better um this card takes a little bit of a setup so ideally it's a play you make in your opponent's turn but you can make it going second you just need to make sure that you have the targets to shuffle to be able to activate it it's a really really good card it's going to keep pressure this card is also another card that is deceptively good double piercing is actually pretty nutty with the amount of shit all players that i run into at my locals this card is going to put in a lot of work it's a popper it gives all your guys double piercing it is this is my um go-to if i can't get the in phase bismuth gear search to add the Vanisher, which again, I keep saying Vanisher, and in case you guys don't know who Vanisher is, it's one of the newer metal foes. It's part of my like full combo, so to speak. I have quite a few combos with this deck, but you're setting up Vanisher, and what you're doing is when you set up Vanisher, you in on Mithurium. If you don't set up Vanisher, you in on Oricount, because you always want to make sure that your fusion plays are more than just one interruption. Every time you activate a full metal foes, you should be taking multiple resources from your opponent while setting up a decent follow-up and a pretty good wall that's hard to break. And so when you set up for this, you want to go Mithurium. The reason being is because when you full metal foes with Mithurium, you're fusing with these two. You can trigger either this or summon Alkais. If you have metal foes combination, you'd rather summon this because you said a, a crazy chain reaction. And that's where a combination becomes really, really powerful because you're going to grind super well also with this up as long as you're fusing because you're going to go fuse into this guy, trigger him. You're going to trigger Mithurium to summon this and you're going to trigger combination. You're going to chain block all of them, which everyone's more important. Summon this out, pop, banish, and then summon this back out. That's a really, really strong play. And that all happens just from setting up a full Metal Foes fusion play with the combination. That's why it really doesn't hurt to draw a lot of Metal Foes. Ideally, you'd rather. And then you have all of these guys. And worst case scenario, even though you don't like to do this, it's only good if you can set up another Mithurium. These guys die, they go to scale. You can pop a card, add a card from Grave, and then use Mithurium to bounce one of these guys. So you can activate a regular Metal Foes monster. And then do your Pendulum Summon and then pop this guy. Or you can pop this guy and then put another scale. Then when you Pendulum Summon, because you're always looping this guy all the time, opening zones to pin Summon 3, 
this comes down, two more from extra deck, your OTK is just really rapid. Like it's just, this deck is really good actually. It's a very, very skillful deck. It has quite a learning curve if you want to do good with it. Um, but honestly, if you're a good player and you have the time to take to kind of master this deck, you're not going to be disappointed. All guys just takes one of your opponent's monsters. It's a snatch deal. Crimsonite is just basically a super poly target. You can hard make it, but if you're going to hard make a beat stick, it's better to make either Azort or Crimsonite because these cards just take more from your opponent. Um, but yeah, you guys, that's pretty much the profile. You guys are kind of seeing my mindset, my approach with this deck. It's a really, really strong deck. This and Zephra are pretty much like, honestly, like the most skillful pendulum decks because you have to work harder to do more. But if you're playing like an Endymion or a Pendulum Magician deck, sometimes all you really need to do is just like activate a few spell cards and you're good to go. Um, but with these, you gotta work a little bit more because like this is not gonna put up um, like five, you know, interruptions. You're not gonna put up Selene, Selene into like Jackal King and Endymion and then go into this guy and then go into this guy and set up like, you, you're, you can set up a decent board. Like you can get maximum, you can get up to three negates on your first turn in board. I just don't think that's ideal because a lot of the time, some of those resources you're using to make the additional negate, you need to consolidate those. And I'm using the word consolidate for a reason to set up for full. I think that it's important for every inboard as a Metal Force player to have full. If you don't have full, you lose a lot of follow-ups and flexibility in how you can interact with your opponent. Negates are good, but imagine if you have three Omni Negates versus a Zodiac monster, and they just have a Zeus with six materials. They force all your negates out with one card. So you want also diversity in the forms of your interactions. That's why I like Fool. It's really good against combos. Setting up multiple pops or a Banish in a pop, plus having an Omni Negate is better than having a second Omni Negate versus having that diversity in your interactions. So I know it sounds like I'm going off on a tangent, but if you really are paying attention and you're not just skimming through the video just to net deck, you're honestly going to learn a lot. I'm going to end the video on that note. Um, God bless you guys. Make good choices. Don't hurt your brain cells. Stay tuned for future content. Jesus loves you guys and definitely be safe wherever you at. Peace.